in Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 he said he pleased the father now if you are wondering why he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased this is the foundation he pleased the father that in him should all the fullness of the Godhead should dwell to dwell bodily the ultimate manifestation of Jesus is the fact that for the first time there was a location in the creations of God where God could be trapped because before the emergence of Christ there was nowhere you could find the fullness of God it was impossible in fact when Paul was teaching in 1st Timothy chapter 1 verse 16 he said God dwells in light that is unapproachable and God is light that means God dwells in God there's nowhere you can find God except in God. So God was secluded from creation. Every time God steps into creation, it was measures that were put in creation, even in heaven, because there is a realm beyond heaven. If you study Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10, it says when Jesus ascended, he ascended above all heaven. There is a height above all heavens. Heaven is not the highest realm. There is a height where no creature can attain. That's where God hides himself. But oftentimes, God will want creation to participate with him. So he brings different measures and different dimensions of him into creation. In fact, the reason the 24 elders cannot stop bowing is because they've not exhausted the dimensions. When they look up, they see a dimension. They worship that dimension. When they look up again, they see another one. They worship. And they look up, they see another one. And they have been doing that forever and ever. But for the first time, a man walked through the city of Galilee. And when they checked, the father, the son, and the spirit was walking bodily. It became a mystery that the world cannot understand. The first time the fullness of God was hosted was in the person of Christ. And so the greatest manifestation of Christ was his ability to trap the fullness of God in bodily form. He captured the whole of God. He captured the totality of God. He kept God within his chambers. That's why Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 say, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in this last day spoken to us by his son, who being the heir of all things, the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Jesus was the full manifestation of the glory and of the brightness of God. The first time God could be trapped was in Christ Jesus. And when Jesus left this world, it wasn't his intention at all for us to carry measures. And so in John chapter 1 verse 16, he said of his fullness. He was the fullness. Now he said of his fullness, have we all received? Of his fullness, have we all received from grace to grace? So as we journey from one level of grace to grace, what we are doing is the business of the fullness. What we are doing is to attain the fullness of the stature. That's why Ephesians 4.11, he said it's to some he gave to be apostles. To some he gave to be prophets. To some he gave to be evangelists. To some he gave to be pastors and teachers for the equipping. That means we needed to be trained to come into experiential manifestation of the fullness of God that is in our spirit. So the job of the apostle is not to heal the sick. The job of the apostle is not to prophesy prosperity. He will do that because there are still people growing. But the job of the apostle is to mentor the believer into the fullness. Because if you get into the fullness, sickness does not exist there. If you get into the fullness, poverty does not exist there. He said to mentor. The word is catatismos. It means to equip you with light until you become a custodian and a manifesto of the fullness of God. That's why I said, henceforth, not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but we will come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. So when you find a believer, a believer should be a replica of Jesus. If you find a believer, 
that you can distinguish between him and Christ, he has not come into the fullness. The idea behind the fullness is to mass express God. So when you come to church, you find God sitting. When you go to the market, you find custodians carrying dimensions of God walking on the street. This is why Christianity is not another religion. We respect all the religions of the world, but this is divinity expressed through humanity. This is mortality swallowed up by immortality. And so when we look at you, Paul said, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. When I see you, I want to see the first dimension of Christ that radiates. Please, let's sit. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. 